You can download the watermark previews or license of full resolution files from Adobe Stock. You can find the links to these images right below this video in the description. Create a selection around the black area to isolate it, but I like working with vectors better because they give you smaller file sizes and they're easier to edit. So we're gonna create a vector around the frame. So I'm gonna press Z on the keyboard. I'm holding the Z key. I'm not Z key, it'll bring me back to the pen tool which I had selected. Make sure that you have shape on the options panel on the drop down. Click on one corner and click on the next. Hold the space bar, pan down, click on the bottom right corner and then click on the bottom left corner. I'm gonna hold the space bar again, click and drag to pan up and complete that path. Now the color of the shape really doesn't matter so I'm just gonna make it red just so that you can see it. There it is, red. What I'm going to do now is enable the layer for the snow border. I'm going to click and drag her up to the top of the layers panel. Just so we can see the image at 100%. And actually, now that I'm looking at it at 100%, I'm actually going to right click on it and choose the one on the bottom here. I'm going to clip to the shape below it. So with that layer selected, I'm going to press Control, Alt, G, Command, Option, and Selection around the snow border. So I'm going to click on the quick selection tool and I'm simply going to click and drag around her. Now you don't have to be very precise at this moment. You can just click and drag and we'll worry about the details later. So we're just going to select her as quick as we can. So I'm just clicking and dragging. And notice that my selection is not very accurate. You shouldn't spend too much time at this moment. If you select an area like this part here that is obviously you're not going to be part of the selection, I'm going to hold Alt, Option on the Mac, click and drag just to refine that selection just a little bit more. Okay, now that I have the selection active around the snow border, I'm gonna select that top layer and click on the layer layer. Hold shift and click on the layer below it so they're both selected. And I'm gonna click on this little chain link icon here to link those two layers. What that allows you to do, it moves both. And they can be in different groups and they can be separated. So that allows us to keep those two layers together. What I'm going to do now is press Control T, Command T to transform, to scale this and adjust it accordingly. If you can't see the corner handles that you want to click and drag on, you can press Control 0, that's Command 0 on the Mac, for the bird's eye view that allows you to see all four corner handles. And I'm going to click and drag this one here to scale it down by holding shift alt that shift option on the mac now at this point we can go back and adjust the layer mask if we need to so i'm going to zoom in just so we can see the areas that we need to work on so we need to work on this area and then the blue outline around her body so we can adjust that by clicking in the layer mask in the properties panel you can click on mask edge if you don't see the properties panel you can go into window properties click on mask edge and then maybe shift the edge with a negative value and see how that's adjusted. So we can keep adjusting it and making sure that that line is gone but we don't lose any detail that we want to keep. Also, with this brush selected, I can click and drag here on the hair and hopefully we'll get a better selection. So now I didn't do that good of a job here. So I'm just gonna leave it like this for now and then I can come back with the brush tool and fix that in a moment. So I'm going to press OK, click on the brush tool, paint with white in areas that I want to keep. So I'm just going to paint with white in these areas here. And I know I'm selecting some of the sky, but that's okay. I'm going to get rid of that by pressing X on the keyboard, which swaps the foreground and background color. And with black, I'm going to paint on that layer mask to get rid of the sky here. Make sure that everything is masked out accordingly. And in most of these areas, everything seems to be okay. I know we gotta work on this area here. And like I said, I'll do that after I'm done with the tutorial and you can see my final result. But for now, we'll just leave it as is. I'm gonna press V on the keyboard, right click, and choose fit to screen. 
And what we're going to work on now is extra elements that are going to help our composite look much more realistic and much more interesting. So from the Adobe Stock Library, I downloaded two elements we're going to use. We're going to use this shovel with the snow. So let me just double click on that to open that up. And by the way, the links to these files are on the description. You have to download them from Adobe Stock. They're not free, but you can use a watermark preview to practice on. So I would recommend you doing that just so that you can have a way to practice and learn. So the first thing I got to do is get rid of this shovel. I'm going to click on the lasso tool. I'm going to make a selection around the shovel. And as you can see, it's not very accurate. Okay. Then I can hold shift and backspace. Or you can go into edit, fill to bring up the fill menu under contents choose content aware and press ok and photoshop will fill in those pixels and make the press ctrl d command d in the mac to deselect and this is what we're going to work with the first thing that we need to do is mask out the snow from the ground so i'm going to go into the channels panel and i'm going to look for the channel that's got the most contrast on the areas that i want to keep for sure so with the lasso tool selected i'm just going to click and drag and make a very rough selection on the areas that I know for sure I want to keep, which is all this top part here. Now that I have the selection active, I can fill with white. White is currently my foreground color. To fill with the foreground color, you can hold Alt, Backspace, Option, Backspace on the Mac. Then Control D, Command D on the Mac to deselect. Now we gotta work on this bottom part. There's a feature in Photoshop called Apply Image. If you go into Image, Apply Image, what apply image allows you to do is taking the blue copy, applying the screen, it'll give you a different result. In this case, I think I'm gonna go with screen, and then I'll just work on the edges in the next step. So I'm gonna press OK. And what I'm gonna do now is go into image, adjustment, levels, and bring the levels to the right, the dark values to the right, so we have more contrast between the snow and the ground. And remember, we're gonna be making right bracket key on the keyboard and I'm just gonna paint with black and again you don't have to be very accurate as long as you get close enough it should be good and I'm just painting these pixels away which represent floor and once again I'm gonna go into image adjustment levels and darken up some of the darker pixels and brighten up the mid tones a little bit and press OK. So this selection looks like it'll work. So I'm going to press Control, Command on the Mac, click on the blue copy icon to make a selection around it, go back into the Layers panel, on the background layer, which is the only layer that we have in this document, I'm going to click on the new layer mask icon, and notice now that the floor is no longer there. Now, it's not a perfect selection, but it's going to work because the color of the floor and the color of the table are very similar colors, and I think we're going to be able to get away with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply click on the layer, select the Move tool, click and drag the layer over onto the other file by hovering over the tab, then coming down and releasing, and there's our file. It's a really big layer, so we're going to need to scale it down. Control T, Command T in the back, Transform. We can't see the corner handles, so I'm going to press Control 0, Command 0 on the Mac. There's the corner handles, and now I'm going to adjust them accordingly. I'm holding Shift as I'm clicking on these key file constraints. The angle is not really matching my scene, so I'm going to right click match scene a little bit better. And I can even distort it if I want to. Maybe right click on it and choose distort just to get a better perspective of the scene that we're working with. Maybe something like this. And press Enter when you're done. Now that we have this file in place, I'm going to press V on the keyboard, right click, fit the screen, then I'm going to press V on the keyboard for, to get the move tool, and maybe I can move it around if I need to, and I'm going to click on the new group icon to create a new group, I'm going to click and drag this snow layer in there, I'm going to collapse it, and now it's in that group, next I'm going to hold Alt, Option on the Mac, and click on the layer mask icon to create a black layer mask which hides everything. Then, with the brush tool, I can paint with white on this layer mask to start revealing some of that snow. So I'm going to use the bracket keys on the keyboard as I work to increase and decrease 
the size of my brush. So I'm just painting with white, just bringing in some of that snow. And if you make a mistake, you can press X on the keyboard to paint with black to maybe shape snow a little bit better. Maybe something like that. What we're gonna do now is work with different elements. So I'm gonna open up the libraries panel and I'm gonna open up this file here, which is these snow elements that were also downloaded from Adobe Stock. By the way, if you don't have Photoshop CC, you won't have the libraries panel, but you can still download the watermark previews onto your desktop and bring them into Photoshop as you would any other image. So you can still work with the previews. So what I'm gonna do now is just select one of these elements and bring it over to the file that I'm working with. So I'm gonna click on the lasso tool and I'm gonna select this element first. So I'm gonna select it, go to edit and copy, or you can press Control C. I'm gonna deselect that element, Control D, Command D on the Mac. Go back into the file that we're working with. I'm gonna paste it here, Control V, Command V on the Mac, and there it is. As you can see, it's a high resolution file, which is good. I'm gonna change the blend mode to screen so the black pixels disappear, and we only keep the bright pixels, in this case, the snow. Then I'm gonna press Control T, Command T to transform, Control Zero, Command Zero for bird's eye view, and I'm gonna scale this element down. I'm gonna press Control Zero, Command Zero again, zoom back in, and I'm gonna just rotate it and make it fit accordingly. Now in this case, I'm gonna flip it horizontally. So right click on it, flip horizontally, and keep rotating it. So maybe something, something like this. And I for it to work, so maybe something like that. So I just press enter to accept that transformation. And I'm gonna use one more element. I'm gonna use this one right down here. Again, control C to copy and paste that in here. Change the blend mode to screen. Control T to transform, that's command in the Mac. Control zero, command zero on the Mac and scale this one in as well. And I'm gonna zoom in rotate this one into position maybe right about here or so but I want this one to be in the back so I'm gonna click and drag this one and place it way back here now I'm just to fit it into position so maybe something like this and actually I just realized that I made a mistake notice how this element gets cut off right in this area that's because this element needs to be one drop shadow notice a little drop shadow there you can use the settings that I have here if you like. Notice that I'm not using black, I'm using a dark burgundy color, which is similar to that color you see right there, right under the frame. And just brought the intensity down to about 25% using multiply. And notice the light is coming from the right. The light on her face is coming from the right, and so is the light hitting the frame. So you sort of want to match that with the shadow. So the shadows will be on the left side, sort of like here behind the frame. So this is what this is showing. So if I were to bring it up to 100%, this is what that looks like. Obviously that's too much, so leave it at about 25% or so. And what I'm gonna do now is, right above this snow element here, I'm gonna create a new layer, and I'm just gonna paint with this color here under the board. So you can click on the eyedropper tool, select that color, and maybe make it a little bit darker, it's too light. Something like that and just continue that shadow that's coming off the board. And actually, let me drag this layer up on top of the group and just continue painting that shadow that's coming off the board. So maybe something like this. And then change the blend mode to multiply and bring that shadow way down. So maybe something like that. Now the only difference between the final image that you saw in the beginning and this one is that with the final image I took a little more time working with the mask, a little more time placing the elements and moving things around so they fit a little bit better. But these are the techniques that I use to create this effect. If you decide to create an image using this tutorial or any of my tutorials, 
then upload it to Instagram with the hashtag PTCVids. Every so often, I do a search for that hashtag, and if I find your image, I'll leave a comment. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned something new. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. If you enjoyed the tutorial, don't forget to click that like button and share this video with a friend. If you haven't already, subscribe to the Photoshop training channel now. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon. Big layer. So we're gonna need to scale it down. Control T, Command T in the back, transform. We can't see the corner handles, so I'm gonna press Control 0, Command 0 in the back. There's the corner handles. And now I'm gonna adjust them accordingly. I'm holding Shift as I'm clicking on these corner handles to keep the file constrained. The angle's not really matching my scene, so I'm gonna right click on it and choose Flip Horizontal. And from here, I can match the scene a little bit better. And I can even distort it if I want to. Maybe right click on it and choose Distort just to get a better perspective of the scene that we're working with. Maybe something like this. And press Enter when you're done. Now that we have this file in place, I'm gonna press Z on the keyboard, right click, fit to screen, new group icon to create a new group. I'm gonna click and drag this snow layer in there. I'm gonna collapse it, and now it's in that group. Next, I'm gonna hold Alt, Option on the Mac, and click on the layer mask icon to create a black layer mask which hides everything. Then, with the brush tool, I can paint with white, on this layer mask to start revealing some of that snow. So I'm gonna use the bracket keys on the keyboard as I work to increase and decrease the size of my brush. So I'm just painting with white, just bringing in some of that snow. And if you make a mistake, you can press X on the keyboard to paint with black and maybe shape snow a little bit better. Something like that. File here, which is these snow elements that were also downloaded from Adobe Stock. By the way, if you don't have Photoshop CC, you won't have the Libraries panel, but you can still download the watermark previews onto your desktop and bring them into Photoshop as you would any other image. So you can still work with the previews. So, what I'm going to do now is just select one of these elements and bring it over to the file that I'm working with. So I'm going to click on the lasso tool and I'm going to select this element first. So I'm going to select it, go to edit and copy or you can press Control C. I'm going to deselect that element, Control D, Command D on the Mac. Go back into the file that we're working with and I'm going to paste it here, Control V, Command V on the Mac and there it is. As you can see it's a high resolution file which is good. I'm gonna change the blend mode to screen so the black pixels disappear and we only keep the bright pixels, in this case the snow. Then I'm gonna press Control T, Command T to transform, Control Zero, Command Zero for bird's eye view, and I'm gonna scale this element down. I'm gonna press Control Zero, Command Zero again, zoom back in, and I'm gonna just rotate it and make it fit accordingly. Now in this case, I'm gonna flip it horizontally. So right click on it, flip horizontally, and keep rotating it. So maybe something, something like this. And I, I can, you know, scale it more if I need to, or rotate it more if I need to. So whatever distortions I need to do for it to work. So maybe something like that. So I just press enter to accept that transformation. And I'm going to use one more element. I'm going to use this one right down here. Again, control C to copy and paste that in here. Change the blend mode to screen. Control T to transform, that's command in the Mac. Control zero, command zero. Rotate this one into position, maybe right about here or so. But I want this one to be in the back. So I'm gonna click and drag this one and place it way back here. And I'm gonna press V to select the move tool and I'm gonna move it around just to fit it into position, so maybe something like this. And actually, I just realized that I made a mistake. Notice how this element gets cut off right in this area? That's because this element needs to be right here. It needs to be in between the layer that's popping out of the subject and the layer that is clipped to the vector. 
but right in between those two. So now the snow follows through into the frame. And now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to work with shadows. So first of all, the snow here on the table, it needs a shadow. So I'm going to open up this group. So we'll click on the snow layer here and click on drop shadow. Notice a little drop shadow there. You can use the settings that I have here if you like. Notice that I'm not using black, I'm using a dark burgundy color, which is similar to that color you see right there, right under the frame. And just brought the intensity down to about 25% using multiply. And notice the light is coming from the right. The light on her face is coming from the right, and so is the light hitting the frame. So you sort of want to match that with the shadow. So the shadows will be on the left side, sort of like here behind the frame. So this is what this is showing. So if I were to bring it up to 100%, this is what that looks like. Obviously that's too much, so leave it at about 25% or so. And what I'm going to do now is right above this snow element here, I'm going to create a new layer and I'm just going to paint with this color here under the board. So you can click on the eyedropper tool, select that color, and maybe make it a little bit darker because it's too light. Something like that and just continue that shadow that's coming off the board. And actually, let me drag this layer up on top of the group and just continue painting that shadow that's coming off the board. So maybe something like this. And then change the blend mode to multiply and bring that shadow way down. So maybe something like that. Now, the only difference between the final image that you saw in the beginning and this one is that with the final image, I took a little more time working with the mask a little more time placing the elements and moving things around so they fit a little bit better but these are the techniques that i use to create this effect if you decide to create an image using this tutorial or any of my tutorials then upload it to instagram vids every so often i do a search for that hashtag and if i find your image i'll leave a comment and that's it for this tutorial i hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned something new if you have any comments or questions Leave them down below.